In this video, we look at the graph data structure. So what is a graph? A graph is a data structure consisting of nodes or vertices and pointers or edges. Although it's common to refer to vertices and edges when discussing graphs, this is largely due to their application in mathematics. A graph differs from a linked list and a binary tree because each vertex can have more than two edges and point to any vertex in the data structure. The edge can either point in one direction, that's a directed graph, or not specify a direction, that's an undirected graph. Graphs can also be weighted, with each edge given a value representing a relationship between the vertices, for example, like distances. Here's an example of how we would represent this undirected graph using Python syntax. Below is an example of some pseudocode that could be used to present the same graph. Here's an example of how we could represent this directed graph using Python syntax. As we already mentioned, it's also possible for each edge to have what we call an edge value associated with it, also referred to as the cost. Edge values are required for some algorithms using graph data structures, like Dijkstra's algorithm. In this example, the edge value between the nodes A and B is 2, the edge value between A and C is 6, and the edge value between A and D is 3. Edge values can represent many things, such as distance, time or bandwidth, and it all depends on what the data structure is being used for. We typically store graphs as objects or using a dictionary known as adjacency lists. However, we can also store graphs using an array known as an adjacency matrix, with rows and columns representing vertices and edges respectively. Here's an example of an adjacency matrix for an undirected graph. When implementing this method, rows and columns are not usually labelled with vertices, but they're shown here to aid understanding. A 1 represents an edge existing between two vertices. In Python, this adjacency matrix could be declared as shown. Another way of representing a graph is by using an adjacency list. There are a much more space efficient way of implementing a sparsely connected graph. With this method, we list all the vertices or nodes. Each node then points to a list of all the adjacent nodes to which it is directly linked. Typically, this can be implemented as a list of dictionaries. When implemented like this, the dictionary keys represent the nodes. And the dictionary values represent the edge weights. Clearly, an unweighted graph as shown here doesn't require a list of dictionaries as there are no edge weights. We therefore don't require the added complexity of the key value pairs offered by dictionaries. In the case of an unweighted graph, the adjacency list simply contains a list of nodes adjacent to each node. So let's compare adjacency matrices to adjacency lists. With a matrix, checking for the presence or absence of an edge only requires accessing the corresponding element in the matrix, and this is a linear or O1 operation. A sparse graph with many nodes but few edges will result in most cells of the matrix being empty. The larger the graph, the greater potential for wasted memory. If using a static 2D array to implement the matrix, it can potentially be harder to add or delete nodes. 
With a list, checking for the presence or absence of an edge requires traversing the linked list of the corresponding vertex. This operation takes OK time, where K is the degree of the vertex. A very space efficient way to implement a sparsely connected graph, as it uses much less memory. So what are the applications of a graph? Well, graphs have many uses in computer science. For example, mapping road networks for navigation systems. Storing social network data. Resource allocation in operating systems. Representing molecular structure and geometry. Consider how navigation systems store map data. They only need to know each road's type and length, plus any other roads it connects to. A good example or abstraction is the map of the London Underground. It bears no resemblance to where the stations are physically located. All that is important is which stations are connected to which lines. So what operations can be performed on a graph? Well, there's quite a few standard operations. Adjacent returns whether there's an edge between two vertices. Neighbours returns all the vertices between two vertices. Add adds a new vertex to the graph. Remove removes a vertex from the graph. Add edge adds a new edge connecting one vertex to another. And remove edge removes an edge connected two vertices. Gets vertex value returns the data stored in a vertex. Set vertex value sets the data for a vertex. Get edge value returns the value of an edge between two vertices. And set edge value sets the value of an edge between two vertices. There are also search operations you can perform on a graph. There's depth first search and breadth first search. And we'll look at these in more detail in later videos. And there are also various traversal operations known as pre-order traversal, in-order traversal, and post-order traversal. And again, we've got videos on these later on. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. What is a graph data structure and how can it be used? What is an adjacency matrix and an adjacency list? Dave and I know that data structures and algorithms are one of the hardest areas of the course. And we've therefore written a dedicated book, which is available to purchase on Amazon. The book covers all the data structures and algorithms you need to be aware of for the exam. Each one has its own dedicated chapter. The chapter overviews the data structure or algorithm, gives you applications, operations, links to our videos online, and goes over the algorithm in simple structured English, a visualization, pseudocode, and is fully coded in Python, C Sharp, and Visual Basic.